So about 10 years ago, I built this platform bed and it was really easy to make. It's really easy to put together. It's all held together with brackets. It was relatively cheap. Um, I think it was under $100 for just the wood. Um, so let me show you all the pieces I made, how to put it together, and what it looks like when it's all assembled. So the first thing you have to decide is how big of a bed you're going to make and what size mattress you want to use. I started with a queen size foam mattress and typically these are all uh, that memory foam mattress because you're not going to have a box spring. You want it to be pretty low to the ground. So I used a queen size mattress which is 60 by 80 and I had inspiration from some other beds I saw online and at a store and they had a really big overhang on the side. So I had a, a, a six inch or an eight inch overhang, I can't remember, of the wood past the mattress. Now it does make the bed a lot bigger, so you better have a, a big room and you, you might stub your, uh, hit your shin on the bed when you're walking around, but I really like the look of the overhang of the wood past the mattress. So that's going to determine the size of the frame you're going to make. Then you have to determine the height, which is what you want it to look like. You don't want it to be too high, but not too low to the ground. Like I said, if, if you're only a foot off the ground and the mattress is only a foot, you're going to be quite low to the ground. But I kind of like the look of a bed that's quite low to the ground, and that's how platform beds look anyway. Now this bed is all made out of pine, and that's because pine is cheap. Uh, I used 2x10s, 2x12s, 2x6s, but when I went to Lowe's or Home Depot or wherever I picked them out, I, I really wanted to pick out good pieces of wood. I didn't want to pick out anything that's warped or curved or bent. So I spent a lot of time picking all these boards out. I used 2x12s for the sides, a 2x6 for the top board. Now the, the legs or the support of the bed are also made out of 2x12s, but I ripped them down to get the height I wanted. It's probably about 7 or 8 inches high. And these are all just cut the same length, nothing fancy. I just made a typical box where they're all the same and I stubbed it so it's all the same length board, nailed it together. And this is all stained with a dark ebony stain. I thought it gave it a good uh, look and it made the pine look a lot more expensive and fancier than it was. After I stained it, I put a coat of polyurethane, sanded that, and two more coats of polyurethane so it has a nice hard finish. When the supports in the middle of the bed are just cheap uh, 1x6 boards. Again, I have the brackets uh, left on there. And a 2x4 in the middle so there's support at the four corners and three spots in the middle, which has been plenty. One thing I did add is because I have, the mattress doesn't sit on this, it actually sits on a piece of plywood which sits on top of this, but it, every time you sat up or got down you're hitting the wood on the wood. So I took some hot glue and I put hot glue in here so it's not wood on wood. It actually cushions it and it... Uh... Now the headboard is just a cheap piece of uh, half inch plywood. I, again I tried to pick out a nice piece with uh, some nice grain to it and I wrapped it with a pine strip along the edge to make it a look, at, look a little cleaner and nicer. So some tools you need to have to build this. Obviously a drill because you're going to be pre-drilling a lot of these holes for the screws and brackets. Um, a circular saw for cutting the boards and cutting the headboard and things like that. But a really important, important tool that you have to have is a belt sander. And because these are cheap pine and cheap plywood boards, I sanded uh, a ton on all these surfaces with the belt sander I used I think uh, 100 grit and 200 or 250 whatever the, the finest grit you can get for a belt sander and I sanded everything and that made it a lot nicer it, it didn't have a rough finish these boards all have a really smooth high uh, high gloss finish and that's because I sanded them a lot with that belt sander and I actually that was one of the first really nice tools I bought it was like $180 for a Porter Cable belt sander and I still have it. It still runs great. The thing's super heavy and, and runs perfect. And I remember I, I justified it by saying I'm saving so much money in building this bed myself that I got a really nice tool and it's one I've had forever. So you're going to need a good belt sander to sand all these surfaces down. You can't just buy, uh, you know, a 2x12 and stain it and, and it won't look as nice as, as it will if you really sand them down. So I have all the brackets and screws and everything numbered and I'll put it together and I'm going to actually put it together upside down, flip it over is what I found to be the best way um, and then I attach the headboard. So let's do that and then I'll show you what it looks like with the mattress on it. Again no complicated joints here. These boards just butt up against each other. I use a bracket to hold it together 
and then I actually use the feet or the legs to also lock it together where I screw in these three sides and that holds it together. Um, I, you know, it's just a butt joint. It's just right up against each other, but it couldn't be simpler and easier to put together. Now, uh, like I said, these boards are what the mattress sits on, and they're going to sit on top of these supports in the middle. But I also have um, an aluminum angle bracket at the top and bottom where that plywood sits on, too. And only two different size screws, the short ones and the long ones. The short ones are for where the steel uh, brackets go and the longer ones are when I'm putting it through the, the legs. The only tricky part here is I have to kind of blindly find where these three uh, holes are, but I've, like I said, I've taken, and, taken this bed apart and put it together so many times there's multiple holes, but you just kind of have to start the screws and uh, feel for the holes. You can uh, get them started in there. Yeah, right there. So now I have the bracket and the leg holding this corner together, and it's quite strong. So three more to go. Put these on, flip it over. And it's real important that you label everything because uh, you know, I have one, two, three, four for the legs, and I have them where they line up because they're all made slightly different. And I remember when I built this, this was one of the very first things that I built uh, that I did plans for on AutoCAD. And I remember it was really great because this bed was all about the look and the height and the stance of it and how high these legs should be in comparison with the bed. And I remember with AutoCAD, I could draw it up and I could get it to be the right proportion. So. I still have some of the old PDFs that I drew back then. If you want to make this bed, it has all the dimensions, how it fits together. Um, that some of these uh, legs go all the way flush to the top and these are set back a little. So if, if you want a copy of the plans, I'll put it down in the description. Time to flip it over. Those uh, double brackets might be a little bit of overkill, but, but it helps to lock everything down. And this bed's not very light. I didn't really consider that, consider lightness when I was drawing it up. Kind of have to pick it up, then put it on your shoulder, slide it back over. Set it down and make sure you don't uh, pinch one of these legs here. Oh, it's no problem. I forgot about that. Then these platform, uh, the, the plywood boards. Sit in the groove of that uh, aluminum angle bar. Split this uh, one by six or one by four right here in the middle. Now the headboard just gets attached with um, a couple screws that are screwed into the two by four at the top and the legs at the side. I wish there was a little bit more support at the top, but typically it's up against a wall, so it doesn't really need it. And that's it. And here it is with the foam mattress, and you can see just how much overhang is built in. If I had to do this all again, I would have shortened this up quite a bit, uh, maybe three inches, so there's just a little overhang. But I saw a bed like this, and I really like the look of this big overhang. 
but that's just a preference thing. Uh, I would not recommend this much overhang. It really takes up a lot of the space, but you can see the dimensions and the size, and it's really nice and low, easy to get into. And it couldn't be more simple how everything's connected. It's just straight cuts, metal brackets screwed in with the legs. It's held up great, super strong. Never had any problems with it. Taking it apart, put it together a half dozen times. And I really like it. So if you want to see a copy of the plans, uh, I'll put the PDFs that I have down in the descriptions with all the dimensions. Thanks. Well, I hope you liked the video you just watched. If you did, feel free to subscribe by clicking the button on this side. You can also check out all the videos I've done, um, the playlist from things I've built, things I've fixed, home repair, 3D printing. And on this side, you can check out a recommended video similar to the one you just watched. And as always, down in the description, I'll put a link to my blog, which has more pictures and more information about the video you just watched. Thanks.